So today we're going to be working on the Sim Cadillac Cimarron. Uh, this first clip that you're going to see is just Jeb uh, trying to get it started because we stored it at his house over the winter since uh, we didn't want to work on it during the winter and we didn't want to drive it either because we didn't want it to get rusty and salt on it. So first clip you're just going to see is Jeb putting in transmission fluid and oil just to make sure all the, the, the fluids are topped off. Then I'll come in because I just went to go get the trailer since we were going to trailer it down to the warehouse to work in on it. But... Uh, Anyway, it hasn't been started in five months, so here we go. So I added the oil and transmission fluid to it and tried to start it. Nothing happened because it's been sitting for so long, so now I'm going to try to jump it. bourbon so just gonna have to wait I guess until there's enough charge. Uh, this is Rural Vermonter. I'm back with Jeb now. He's gonna try to start the Cimarron after it's been charging for about eight minutes or five minutes. Nothing. He broke it. Oh wait there it goes. Oh almost. Do it again. Hold it. Okay now. Jeb trying again. Here we go. Come on. Okay. It ain't gonna go. Should we just use the suburban battery? Huh? And then use the suburban battery maybe? Yeah, we could just put it in. Well, we're just gonna take Jeb's battery and put it in the Cimarron because Cimarron's not holding the charge too well even after we left it sitting there. Got the battery out of Jeb's Suburban and uh, out of the Cimarron. I'm gonna slide her in there. It's a little bit bigger, let's see if it fits. Bourbon battery's kinda squeezed to get in there, but we got it. Uh, Try to fire it up now, I guess, Jeb. Right. There she goes. Woo! It's good. She's fired up. Sounds good, too. No clunk, no knock. Lovely. Doing 7,000 RPMs right now. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Now the tack is, I think they put the wire on the tack backward. I don't know what who did it, but they might have hooked it up backward. So we're going to load this up onto my trailer, head down to the shop. So the first stop I'm going to make with this all loaded up is I'm going to go to the car wash because as you can see, it's pretty dirty and I want to see what the paint looks like under all this grime because it's been sitting outside 15 years. Uh, see all the dirt, even up here. Yeah, see, look at this. It's all just caked on there. So then I'm going to buff the paint out and then after I do all that, then I'll do the brake replacements. So let's get started first. It's in the car wash. I'm gonna spray it down, see how it looks. Well, I just finished washing her. I don't know how this paint is gonna look after that, but at least we got the grime off. Hopefully after I buff it though, it, it'll it shine a little bit, but it's definitely really worn paint because I'm assuming it sat outside its whole life. And whoops, forgot to wipe the soap off of there. Made it to the warehouse, we're gonna unload now. Let's see if it starts because I did switch the other battery back in after I charged it for a little. Come on. Feel like it's about to do it. <laughs> no, all right. Got the Tundra to jump start it. <laughs> See the Tundra in a future video as well. Paid two grand for it. It's kind of rusty, but it had a new frame. And it's only V6.
Well guys, so here's the car all cleaned up. I actually am not gonna have time to buff it in this video. I just got too many other things to do. Um, but you can see the paint is all right. It's pretty faded though. I mean, on especially on the hood, on the roof and on the trunk. I did try to buff out the hood for a little while. Um, and it's just it's too faded and it actually has some hail damage if you look at it from this angle You can see the hail damage which makes it really hard to get all the areas correctly uh, the roof is Faded and it's got some spots that need touch-up paint on it the sides Are respectable though and the chrome is still in nice shape uh, as You can see the sides are not that bad and then the plastic cladding is in a little bit of trouble and needs some help but uh, at least there it is with the car wash all done so you can see it without the pollen and grime on it all right jeff's gonna go pull it into the warehouse honestly i like the way these little things look you know they're cute little old cars simran drove it on in here and it got to the spot we wanted to but now Seem to have a problem, so we're gonna have to look into that. Well, I sent Jeb to the store to get uh, the gas and starter fluid just, so just to see if the fuel pump died or we ran out of gas, if the fuel gauge is inaccurate or something. But I'm gonna pop this wheel off and start on the brake while he does that. So, on these old GM cars, they do a really nice thing they put uh, caps over the caliper bolts so that they don't rust or get dirt in them. Also, it's a star pattern, so you gotta have, you gotta make sure you got one of these tips. So we got the passenger side off. I'm gonna go do the driver's side now. I accidentally left the rotors and pads with Jeb, so I can't just replace it. But I can at least get it off while I wait. So we'll do this side now. Got this side off too. So I'm gonna start uh, putting in the brakes now since Jeb is back, filling it up with diesel. Just kidding, it's just a diesel tank. Here we go. This side is done. I'm gonna put the tire back on and then go to the other side. Before I do the other brake, we're gonna take a short intermission to see if it starts again. I went underneath, I tapped on the gas tank with the little thing to see if it sounded like it was empty. The gas tank did sound pretty low, so we filled it up with five gallons, 93 gas. Give it another shot. Yep. All right. So we're gonna put, uh, we're gonna do a little teamwork. Jeb's gonna do this brake over here and I'm gonna see if I can troubleshoot the engine. Let's just see if it's a fuel problem. I'll put a little starter fluid in there. What's happening? No. Yeah, it's a fuel issue. Either got a weak fuel pump or we ran it low on gas. So we'll prime the fuel pump. You can hear it going. And let's check our pressure. Because I don't have a PSI meter at the rail. Yeah, we're getting we're getting some pressure there, so it could be the injectors. All right, I got the fuel pressure gauge lined up. We're gonna see if, what we have. Go ahead, Jeb, turn it to prime. Oh, wow. Okay, try to start it. All right. We actually have good fuel pressure. So with the Cimarron having fuel pressure, um, 
I think I'm gonna just start with the injectors, ohm them out, see what they, see if anybody's shorted, see if anybody's gummed up. Uh, so we're gonna tackle that in the next video. Uh, but thank you for watching this one, guys. We got it running, or sorry, we we got it running, but then it died again. But at least we got it back up and put new brakes on it. Uh, next video, I'm gonna tackle the injectors and see if we can get it running again. And then maybe if I have time, if that doesn't take too long, I'll do some other work cosmetic-wise on it. But thanks for watching this one, guys, and I'll see you next week.